What's up guys? This weekend I am home with my parents, with my mom, and we are throwing some pottery this morning so I thought I would record it for YouTube. I've got a couple pottery videos on here already that um, people really enjoy and they want to see more but I haven't been able to make anything at the cabin because I don't have a kiln or a very good wheel or tools or anything. So. We're gonna throw some stuff today for my mom. If you don't know, we have a little shop called Craft Creek Creations, and it's all handmade items by my family. So my mom makes pottery and cutting boards. My dad makes some wooden bowls. My brother makes some cutting boards. Um, so if you're ever interested in that, the link is down below. We're doing a restock around August 1st, but we're not positive. <laughs> so today I'm gonna throw a big, kind of like a vase, a skinny neck vase, over here, um, my mom is going to make them into soap pumps or big soap pumps or they might turn into vases or maybe like olive oil pours, but I'm going to show you guys how I make a skinny neck vase. I use about three pounds of clay for these vases. And this is speckled clay, right mom? Yep. 112. 112 clay. I'll usually cut a chunk like that. I'm not too particular with the exact weight. And then for fresh clay like this, I like to just pound it on the table into a little ball or cylinder shape. I don't really feel like there's a need to knead the clay because at this point, hopefully there's already no air bubbles in it because it's fresh. So I usually do a shape like this for throwing. I'll just a smidge under three pounds. So we use this bat system where it has a little removable bat in the middle there. You gotta make sure it's dry before you put it on. Not dry, but not too moist. All right, so now I'm just gonna center the clay and I'm just gonna push down first to make sure it's stuck to the bat. And then I'm going to push it inward so that it rolls up tall, just towards the center so that your arms aren't moving. And you want your elbows to be bared down on the wheel there. And then I like to push down like this, straight down. I'll do that a few more times. I like standing because you can use a lot of your weight into pushing it towards the center. flatten it into the shape I want so I'll make it as big as I want the base of my vase or pot to be and once it doesn't have a big wiggle or anything I'll make the hole I usually just use my middle finger and go straight down and then you can stop it and measure the width of the bottom by using a pin tool like this I'm just sticking it through the bottom and that's about that big so I'm gonna make it a little smaller I mean I'm gonna start to pull out no. with just my middle finger like this and I just pull out and make sure it's all touching about the same and your base will get deeper and wider as you mess with the clay so I don't mind that. Now I'm just going to use this little um, rubber tool. What are these called? Rib. rib. A little rib. And just going to smooth the bottom by pushing it against the bottom and then up the side so it's all compressed. Then I'm going to take this little sponge. Sometimes I use these sponge or the little yellow ones. It doesn't matter which. 
and you want to slow down your wheel a little bit pull up the sides pull up the sides I usually just use my finger and my middle finger and on the side I use a sponge and I'm pushing in and up slowly and then I'll compress the rim each time to make sure it doesn't get off center and I try to really push at the bottom here because there's a lot of extra clay down there that I don't want to waste so I'll push it in and up going to pull it back in because when you're pulling it up you kind of tend to go out like this but I'm going to push it back in a little because we're going to make it tall and I just squeeze it gently trying to apply the same pressure everywhere all right I'm going to do it again push in the base so once it's tall like this I'm using my whole hand to just pull up the side and pressing against it. All right, again, I'm just gonna pull it together. And sometimes this will make your top off center. You don't have to worry about it too much because you can always trim it. Okay, now I'm gonna trim the bottom. I'm gonna use this little triangle tool. And I'm gonna stick it in the edge here. So I touch the bottom. And then I'm gonna take the needle tool and just go along the bottom there. And then you can stop it. And just cut that off. That way I don't have to trim all this later. And now I can pull up the remaining clay at the bottom there. So now I'm gonna pull up this clump of clay. And you always wanna keep a cylinder shape and keep it as skinny as possible because it's a lot harder to bring it back in as it gets wider. So once you have a cylinder, then you can make it any shape that you'd like. And I never really know what I'm going to make going into it. I was just picking up the water in the bottom there. My rim is still pretty thick, um, which is good. It's not too thin. So now we'll just shape it. And sometimes you can use like a tool like this or like this to go along and just shape it. I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And we're gonna press out, and I usually press out from the inside. And when you're keeping, when you're making a skinny neck, then you're gonna wanna mess with the bottom to get it to the shape that you want it to be. And then bring it back up to the top so that um, you can handle the weight of it. I'm gonna pull this back in there. Then I'm gonna go ahead and with my sponge again. Now that it got, you want your water to not be too, that one's very um, clay.
to them for the details of the shape. I like to use the little rib because it really smooths it all out. And it takes off the excess water also. This will either be like an extra large soap dish, kind of like maybe for your Dawn dish soap by the kitchen sink when you don't want to refill often, or maybe a giant olive oil. This pour, it'll shrink though a lot, so it will not be this big once it's done. They shrink about 12% in the kiln, depending on the clay. So you think it's gonna be really big and then it turns out really small. So, I also have a mirror behind it here, so it's easy to see the full shape of the vessel. <laughs> and I'm going to trim the bottom there a little more. I know that my bottom's really thick, so I have room to take off some more. Alright, so I have this cork here, and this is what will um, be used once it's done. So I want the top of it to be as wide as the fattest part of the cork because it's going to shrink. And it's just about perfect. Alright, here is the base. Let's grab a ruler and measure it. Here's my mirror. So that's the setup, my tripod, my water. See, I was getting really full of clay and murky, so I got some fresh water. So this base is about like 10 and 10 and a half inches tall, 10 or so. And so that'll probably shrink down to like nine inches tall in the kiln. Here's the other two vases I made this morning. So many of you ask what kind of wheel we use and this is the wheel. My mom bought this new about 15 years ago. So a wheel is definitely an investment. They're a lot of money, but they're gonna last forever. Plus, they have a great resale value, so if anything were to happen, you'll definitely be able to make money back on a wheel or kiln, and then I'll show you the kiln we have also. So this is the kiln we use. It's just a scut.